Welcome to Online Sunday School and our year theme, Where's God? Welcome to our third lesson of Where is God in the Southern Kingdom? So far in the Southern Kingdom, we've seen that God is with prophets like Isaiah, giving messages to share with all the people. We've seen God is with kings like Josiah and Hezekiah, helping the people to remember to obey God. Today, we'll meet another prophet that God has a message for. As we're looking at our story of Jeremiah today, we'll need to remember our big picture question. How did God plan to fix what sin broke? You can open your passports again to Where is God in the Southern Kingdom and put a sticker on lesson three. If my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Second Chronicles 7.14 Here we go, our new verse with the actions. If my people who are called by my name, humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Second Chronicles 7, 14. To practice our memory verse today, let's do some jumping jacks. If my people who are called by my name humble 
themselves. And pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Second Chronicles 7, 14. Great job. I'm going to show you some pictures of some really old technology. If you recognize them, you know what they are, give me a thumbs up. If you have never seen this piece of technology before or have no idea what it is, give me a thumbs down. Are you ready? Do you know what this is? Thumbs up if you know what it is and you can name it. Thumbs down if you don't know what it is. This is called a Walkman. You could walk around while listening to music. Thumbs up if you know what this is called. Thumbs down if you don't. This is called a rotary telephone. You had to put your finger in the empty hole beside the number you wanted, drag it to the end, and then it let it wind all the way back. It took a long time to put in someone's phone number. Thumbs up or thumbs down? What is this? I'm sure you knew this was a computer, but did you know there was only two colors on this computer screen, black and green. Do you know what this is? Thumbs up or thumbs down? This is called a phone booth. If you are away from home, you can make a phone call by putting a quarter in. Do you know what this one is? It might be one of the hardest. Thumbs up if you know, thumbs down if you don't. This is called dial-up internet, where you connected to the internet through your phone line, which meant you had to choose. Did you want to use the phone or use the internet? Last one. Thumbs up if you know, thumbs down if you don't. This is called a cassette player. Music was recorded on film that was wound up inside a plastic rectangle cassette tape. You put the cassette tape inside this and it would play the music for you. Now that we've named some of these old pieces of technology, let's see if you can match them with what has replaced them. What newer technology has replaced these older ones? Let's see if you can match them correctly. Try to match which piece of new technology replaced each piece of old technology. The cassette player was replaced with the CD player. The rotary telephone was replaced with a push button telephone. The old computer was replaced with a new laptop. Can you match these three old pieces of technology with what has replaced them?
dial-up internet was replaced with Wi-Fi. Walkmans were replaced with iPods. Telephone booths were replaced by cell phones. All of these old pieces of technology were good in their time, but they've been upgraded to something better, to something that works better for people now. In our story today, the prophet Jeremiah tells about how God has made an upgrade, an upgrade to the deal or covenant that he made with his people. The old covenant was the agreement or deal God made with his people based on their obedience to the law. The new covenant is the agreement or deal God made with people that he will give us new hearts and forgive our sin. Our story today comes from the book of Jeremiah, which is in the dark green section, our major prophets, the same as Isaiah. Remember to think about our big picture question as we watch our story. How did God plan to fix what sin broke? When Josiah was the king of Judah, God called a priest named Jeremiah to be a prophet. God told Jeremiah, I knew you before I made you in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I chose you to do very special things. I chose you to be a prophet to the nations. Oh no, God, Jeremiah said. I don't know how to speak in front of other people. I am just a boy, only a youth. Don't say that, God replied. You will go where I send you and say what I tell you to say. I am with you. I will protect you. For many years, Jeremiah spoke God's message to the people of Judah. He reminded them that God had made a covenant with them. If they obeyed him, he would bless them. But the people did not obey. Now God had to punish their sin. God said the people would lose their land, their wealth, and their freedom. Uh. Jeremiah explained, the people's hearts fool them into thinking they are better than they actually are. They trick people into wanting things or doing things that God does not want for them. The people did not want to listen to Jeremiah, and Jeremiah was sad. He warned them that God's punishment was coming, but he also said that God had a plan to change his people's hearts. God promised a new and better covenant so the people could be saved from their sins. God would write his law on people's hearts. He would give his people power to obey his commands. God said, I will forgive their wrongdoing and never again remember their sin. God told Jeremiah to write God's message on a scroll. So Jeremiah spoke God's words and his friend Baruch wrote the words on a scroll. Baruch read from the scroll so that all the people heard God's words. He warned that the king of Babylon would come and destroy Judah. King Jehoiakim sent one of his officials to get the scroll. As the official read the scroll, King Jehoiakim cut off each part of the scroll and threw it into the fire. He did this until the entire scroll was burned up. So God told Jeremiah to write another scroll with the same words as the first scroll. Jeremiah told the king, God is going to punish you, your family, and your leaders for doing wrong things. God warned you this disaster will come to Judah, but you did not listen. Jeremiah told about a day when God would forgive sin and change people's hearts. Jesus made these words come true. God forgives our sin through his son, Jesus. He changes us and gives us power through His Spirit to obey His commands. Who was king of Judah when Jeremiah was called as a prophet?
Young King Josiah. What did God tell Jeremiah to say about people's hearts? They are sick and trick us into sin. What did King Jehoiakim do with the scroll Jeremiah and Baruch wrote? He burned it up bit by bit. What are some ways our hearts are tricky? Our hearts are tricky because our hearts want things like money to buy the things we like. They want fame, like maybe you want to be a famous hockey player or a famous singer. When our hearts are set on money or power or fame, they are not set on God. This makes our hearts turn us to sin. Why is the new covenant better? The new covenant is better because God isn't just with us. He is in us. When Jesus forgives us of our sins, we have the Holy Spirit in us, helping us to obey God. When did the new covenant start? The new covenant started when Jesus was the final sacrifice for us, and he saved us from our sins. Jeremiah told about God's new covenant, that God would forgive their sin and forget them. This would all be possible because of the Messiah that Isaiah said was coming. We know it's possible because we know that Jesus died on the cross, giving us forgiveness and making God forget our sin. For our activity today, I'm going to whisper a message to you. You need to repeat it back to me. 
Then we will see if you heard me correctly. Pink pigs are pretty precious. Pink pigs are pretty precious. Is that what you heard me say? Shelly sells sheep's shells by the seashore. Shelly sells seashells by the seashore. Bumblebees are buzzing. Bumblebees are buzzing in the brown barn. If you're getting them all right because you turned your volume up on your TV, turn it back down to where you normally have it and see if you can get any of them. Marbles from the market are full of seeds. Marbles from the market are marvelous. One last one. Cranky critters crowd into empty cracker boxes. Cranky critters crowd into empty cracker boxes. Sometimes it's hard to hear a message if someone whispers it and if they only say it once. It can be confusing and we end up with the wrong message. Thankfully, God didn't whisper and God didn't just say it once. God told Jeremiah the message and Jeremiah told the people over and over again. Jeremiah wrote down God's message and after it was burned, he wrote it down again. God wanted to make sure that the people knew the message he had for them. Now we have the Bible. We can read God's message over and over again. We can read it and talk about it and understand the message he has for us. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for loving us even though we sin. Thank you for sending Jesus to forgive us of our sin. Help us to obey you and share your incredible love with other people. Amen. How did God plan to fix what sin broke? Even though God knew that we wouldn't listen, that we would disobey, he created us anyways, and he made a plan to fix what sin broke. He made a plan to send Jesus to forgive us for all the wrong things that we do. Where did you see God in the Southern Kingdom today? Remember, keep looking for God every day and then tell me about it so I can share it with everyone. Keep working on your memory verse and send me a video when you've got it ready. We'll see you next week for our January Worship Sunday. Look at the pattern in each row and circle what comes next.
Next to each bit of old technology, draw what the modern version looks like. Dream job. Think about a job you would love to have. Draw a picture of yourself in that job. List the skills you would need. List some of the tasks you would need to do. Old Covenant, New Covenant. Color the statements red if they describe the Old Covenant, or color them yellow if they describe the New Covenant.